Welcome to part one of the SI faculty training module, which will provide an overview of the supplemental instruction model and its purpose. SI is an academic assistance program that targets courses which are deemed traditionally difficult because they have high, unsuccessful completion rates of D grades, F grades, and withdrawals. Over time, these courses have demonstrated their difficulty regardless of the faculty who teach them or the material used. SI has a threefold purpose to reduce rates of attrition, to improve student understanding of concepts measured in terms of higher grades, and to increase the graduation rates of students. The main goal of SI is to help students become independent learners. The projected outcomes for participating students are understanding what to learn, but also how to learn it effectively successfully completing the course by earning a passing grade, and developing transferable study skills that can be applied in other courses, even in future semesters. SI leaders serve as peer facilitators for group study sessions. This role requires leaders to attend all class meetings of their assigned course sections to ensure they have constant and consistent knowledge of lecture material and course expectations. Class attendance is crucial in developing the content and approach of SI sessions and is what sets SI apart from other forms of academic support. Here is a visual breakdown of the responsibilities and expectations. In addition to attending all class lectures, SI leaders are expected to be a visible presence, act as a model student, read assigned texts, promote SI sessions to all students, develop SI session plans, facilitate three weekly study sessions, communicate with faculty, encourage student participation, and meet with SI staff. The role of an SI leader is different from that of a graduate assistant or teaching assistant in a number of ways as outlined in this chart. While SI leaders demonstrate proficiency in the content area by receiving an A grade in the course, they do not profess to be content specialists. If an SI leader does not know the answer to a student's question, he or she will model effective research methods and or promote the importance of utilizing the instructor's office hours. Developing peer-to-peer -peer relationships and having no access to the student's grade in the course allows the SI leader to be relatable and approachable to enrolled students. The SI leader's primary goal is to model how to be successful by integrating specific study skills with course content, thus promoting transferable skills. SI leaders encourage and elicit group participation with collaborative learning techniques and processes. As a result, participants are expected to be active contributors in the learning process. SI leaders are also student-oriented, focused on areas of concern from the student's perspective. The SI leader does not simply relecture material covered by the professor. He or she functions as a guide in the process of enhancing a student's ability to apply knowledge. Ultimately, academic responsibility remains on the individual student. In order to maintain the professor's role of authority in the classroom environment, at no point should the SI leader teach portions of the class, lecture, or grade assignments or exams. Now that we've discussed the role of the SI leader, let's conclude by discussing the role of the SI faculty member. SI leaders are required to keep faculty involved through regular meetings and communication. The purpose of this is to inform faculty of questions students have about particular content or areas where they are struggling, and to identify ways to work together to promote attendance. SI leaders may also request that faculty offer an advanced review of SI materials if they are interested. Here is a visual breakdown of the responsibilities and expectations. SI faculty members should encourage all students to attend sessions, not just those who are struggling or failing. Remind students about SI's potential to be a valuable resource for them. Allow the SI leader to make weekly announcements with relevant updates. Permit SI leaders to send emails to the class by adding them to the course's Blackboard account. Meet regularly with the SI leader, as decided upon at the beginning of the semester, to both seek and offer feedback. Communicate with the SI leader about the expectations of the course and specific assignments or exams. And be an available resource for the SI leader as they navigate their leadership role on campus. 
The overall effectiveness of an SI leader is largely influenced by the partnership built between them and their assigned SI faculty member. With this said, it is important to establish a working relationship that aligns with your communication preferences, schedules, and mutual expectations. This relationship aids in providing a meaningful educational experience for the SI participant. Thank you for taking time to learn more about the SI model. Part 2 will discuss the selection of SI courses, distinguish SI sessions from more traditional forms of group studying, and provide data to show grade impacts of participants versus non-participants.